Hey pals, I'm here today to have a look back at my 2022 reading and also talk about my plans for 2023 reading. I'm hoping that some of the sort of, I guess, positives and negatives from 2022 can inform my reading for 2023 because I want 2023 to be like an amazing reading year. And so I've been trying to spend the last couple of weeks thinking about how I can do that. And I think I have a plan. So let's chat about 2022 first. I finished 96 books. I did have a goal to read 120, but I'm really not precious about that goal. Like when I see that I'm falling behind, I'm like, meh, whatever. So um, I'm not, when I give myself a goal like that, the goal is more because I want to spend a lot of time reading rather than like being able to say, oh, I read X amount of books because it's sort of pointless because I think what's much more valuable in terms of a measurement is the page count and of, of course your enjoyment. So yeah, so out of those 96 books, that was 32,728 pages, which meant that the average length of a book I finished was 341. I'm someone who... I think moves away from reading shorter books. I'm not massively drawn to books that are sort of under the 250 page mark. I have read some books of that length that I've enjoyed, but I tend to be more likely to enjoy a book that is closer to the 400 page mark. And I very much enjoy larger books, um, particularly sort of fantasy. To me, a fantasy book is short if it's less than 550 pages. So that probably skews my average a little bit because I read a few fantasy books in 2022. I also DNF'd 73 books, which is actually more than I thought I'd DNF'd. Um, so it's fairly close to the number of books I finished, which isn't great. Um, out of those books I DNF'd, I read 6,230 pages. So to have read that many pages of books I haven't enjoyed isn't great. Um, so on average, I DNF'd a book at the 85 page mark. Now, that's quite off because some books I DNF are like... 20 or 30 pages although that doesn't happen that often I tend to give a book more of a chance than that for some of these books I got to like page 150 one I got to page 250 before DNFing so yeah it sort of skews the um, average somewhat then I pulled this chart off story graph so out of the 96 books I finished which is what I track on story graph um 11% of them were over 500 pages. And I would think that nearly all of those were fantasy books. There might be one or two nonfiction on that list. Then 58% of them were between the 300 and the 499 page mark. That's definitely like my wheelhouse in terms of the type of books I tend to enjoy. And then only 32% of them were less than 300 pages. And I reckon most of those were between 200 and 300 there was probably very few that were less than 200 off the top of my head I can't think of a single book I read that was less than 200 pages although I'm sure one or two um sort of slipped through the net then in terms of format 77% of what I read was a physical copy in print and that would have been a mixture of books I bought and books I borrowed from the library um 19% was uh, audiobooks and 4% were digital. I do have a Kindle, I barely ever use it, but I did read a couple of books on my Kindle. And those tend to be like when I was reading a few romance books during the summer, I'm not really bothered about like owning them or like borrowing a physical copy. So I read a couple of romance books on my Kindle. In terms of where that stands, I'm, I'm fine with the digital. I don't really enjoy reading digitally, but I think the audio amount could be higher. And, and the reason I say that is when I hear 19%, I feel okay with that figure. But actually, when I look back on my reading in 2022, I know one thing I got really bad at, and this is not necessarily in terms of my reading life, but my general life, I got really bad at going out for walks. And when I was off work for a significant period because I was unwell, um, sort of at the start of the pandemic, one thing that really helped me and my mental health was getting out for walks every day. And I would always convince myself that even though I felt like I really didn't want to go out for a walk, like I was in pyjamas and I didn't want to get changed and I didn't want to go out, I never once left the house and got part way down the road and like regretted having left the house. I was always happy I'd done it. It always was really good for my mental health and my like general well-being. And I just feel like that suffered in 2022 and I definitely didn't um, go out enough. And whenever I do go out for a walk, I always listen to audiobooks. So I'd be happy for that number to be higher. 
more because it would get me outside more walking, which I would definitely, you know, like to do. So, so that's a fine number, but yeah, be happy for that to go up. Then one thing that Storygraph tracks, which I was quite happy to see, is um, your sort of fiction to non-fiction comparison. So 81% of the books I read were fiction and 19% were non-fiction. I'd probably have guessed that I'd read a bit less non-fiction than that because it doesn't feel like I read that much, but I guess that's, you know, around about uh, one fifth. So that makes sense. And then something else I attract in 2022 is um, I sort of use the tag function on Storygraph um, and I tagged a few genres that I know I really enjoy and want to make sure I read more of. And I don't feel like I read enough of any of those. So the tags are nonfiction, which we've already discussed, um, fantasy. So I think I completed 13 fantasy books. I really i have a really bad hit rate with fantasy and i dnf a lot of them but when i find a fantasy to enjoy it gives me such a happy feeling i feel really overjoyed when i read fantasy which is really odd because fantasy can be really bleak and depressing but because it's not our world it feels like such a like adventure and like a wild ride and i just really love reading fantasy when i'm enjoying it then short story collections i read eight short story collections that's the best i've done in years Again, five or six years ago, I used to read so many short story collections, probably at least two every month. And then uh, for some reason, I don't know, I just stopped reading them, not because I wasn't enjoying them, I just fell out of the habit. So eight is a good amount, but I really enjoyed some of the collections I did read and really want to increase that amount. And then the only other thing I track as a tag is how many um, graphic novels slash uh, sort of graphic nonfiction I read. And I think I only read one. I find that a lot of um, graphic novels out there like I won't enjoy and my library doesn't hold a lot so that can be quite pricey to like buy and take the risk but what I tend to really enjoy is um, memoirs in a graphic format or like non-fiction in a graphic format and you know I'd like to read more than one of those a year so I have a few on my radar that I'd like to give a go in 2023. And then the only other thing that I want to mention about 2022 is that my average rating was 3.55 out of 5 stars which is not great. Now, I am, well, I don't want to say I'm a harsh rater. I think people view the star rating system differently. I've always interpreted it in exactly the way that Goodreads words it. Five stars is, I loved it. Four stars is, I really liked it. Three stars is, I liked it. Two stars is, it was okay. And one star is, didn't like it. Now, what concerns me is I DNF'd 73 books. I don't rate any of those books. I don't rate a book of I DNF'd. I don't think that's fair. So out of all those books I DNF'd, most of them would have been two stars or one star. So out of the 96 books I chose to finish, you would think my average rating would skew higher. Because I DNF so easily, you would think that out of the books left, they're more likely to be four and five star reads because like, if not, why didn't I DNF them? So I feel like 3.55 is, is quite a rubbish sort of rating for me to have ended up with. It's quite common for me to end up with that rating. And I do feel like when I look back on my reading over the last two years, I'm really happy when I consider like my favorite books, but I think, which I'll be doing a video about in, in a few days, but when I look at the rest of my reading, the vast majority of it, I feel a bit like, mm, you know, some of those I'm really glad I read, some of them like I could take or leave them. And I don't really want to look back on my reading year and think, oh, you know, I could, I could not have read that book and I wouldn't really, be bothered. I don't want to feel indifferent about my reading because it is this hobby that I really love. So yeah, so that's not a great average rating. We're done with the charts now, so I've moved over slightly. So I've been having a think about what I want to do in 2023 to try and have just like the best reading year. Because, you know, this is like my number one hobby. I've done a channel about it now for over 10 years. Um, it was my 10 year booktube anniversary on the 5th of January. Madness. And yeah, so I don't want to sort of feel that I haven't loved it. And I'm not saying that every single book I read I should be absolutely in love with. But I think there was a, so even though I read 96 books, which to me sounds like a decent amount to have read, when I look back on my reading year, I really feel like I didn't spend that much time reading, which is mad because, you know, I read an okay number of like total pages when you add together um, the amount of pages I, books I finished and DNF was like 38,000. But yeah, it just doesn't feel like I spent that much time reading. There's also a lot of periods where I was reading a book, 
and like didn't really feel drawn to pick it up and I'd quite often have to think oh you know you should be reading now and I think so much of that is habit forming that I do find that when I'm reading a book that I am loving I don't have to be in the habit of reading I will just want to and like for example I'll even like when I'm cooking something and there's like a five minute gap between cooking I'll try and read in that five minute gap and I felt like that didn't happen to me very often in 2022 which to me is you know, sort of a commentary on how I felt in general about my reading in 2022. So my plans are, I've given myself a challenge of 120 books again. And I've done that, I'm really not gonna stress over it. I've done that simply because I would like to spend more time reading than I did in 2022. So it's like an easy way to measure that. However, I've also given myself a page number target of 50,000 pages. I think in the whole time I've had my channel, I've only managed that a couple of times. But when I look back on the years when I managed that, I was working part time, which makes it easier. But also I did read more fantasy. Now, I do find that when I'm reading a fantasy book I love, I read it um, much quicker. And that's because genre fiction tends to be uh, quicker to read than literary fiction. But also because, you know, I get quite a lot of joy out of reading it. And so I, I want to spend time with it. So yeah, I'm going to try aim for 50,000 pages. I'm absolutely fine if that's less than 120 books because aiming to read more fantasy will skew my reading towards longer books. Um, so I might end up reading less books in 2023, but like a higher page count. And I'm absolutely fine with that. But it's just sort of an easy way to, to measure. So I also have a few other things I would like to do outside of reading which are also time consuming so the, so the first thing I want to address is how do I think I'm going to magic up this extra time and that's two ways firstly I have reduced my hours at work to 80 percent um, I work full-time which in the UK is 40 hours a week but I have had it agreed that I am no longer going to work Tuesday or Thursday afternoons um, a couple of reasons for that one is that I've been trying to um, manage um, a condition I have called functional neurological disorder which when I'm stressed which is usually caused by work um, can flare up and I get um, quite bad nerve pain and I've been trying to manage that in various different ways in 2022 and none of those ways really worked so the next step was to try and reduce my hours and maybe have like a better work-life balance um, so I, I'm really hoping that's going to help I've just started my new hours um, in the first week of January I feel super positive about it and um, the second reason for that was because I don't want to give up the channel. I really enjoy doing the channel and I have such fun um, talking to you all about my reading. But when you work a full time job and, you know, my job's quite sort of stressful um, and then at the weekends you then want to sort of just chill. And I'm quite introverted, so, I, you know, most of the time I'd rather just be... Um, spending time um, with Johnny and the cats and, and reading and doing all the things we enjoy doing. I have to spend my weekends filming. So as soon as you add in, uh, you know, seeing family on one day, then the other day I just have to film and edit basically. And so then I've not, I never have a day and I've noticed this for years and I always say, oh, I need to try and do something about it and I never manage it. Basically, every single day I'm off, whether that's a weekend or holiday from work, unless I'm away from home, every single day I'll be thinking, I should be filming a video now. I should be editing this video now. I should be planning for this video now. I never feel like I'm completely off from the channel, which is a choice. Like I do this channel, um, it's something I enjoy doing. I don't have to do it, right? But I think by giving myself those two afternoons, um, as well as being able to you know, get some of my time back, to be able to get out and, and go for more walks and things. I'm also hoping to use that time to do the YouTube stuff so that it doesn't have to eat into my weekend as much. I don't mind if every now and again I need to film on the weekends, but in large part I would like to try and avoid that and try and view those Tuesdays and Thursdays afternoon as a time when I can focus on the channel. So there's that, which I'm feeling really positive about, um, and fingers crossed that makes a massive difference to my life. And yeah, and to the channel. And then the other thing, and perhaps the bigger thing that's going to be more of a challenge, is that I spend so much time watching YouTube. I've always been somebody who never um, watches TV and like sort of channel hops and watches stuff for the sake of watching. So basically, Johnny and I only ever watch TV when there's something specific we want to watch. 
we'll turn the TV on just for that and then we won't like carry on watching just to see what comes on next, okay? Which is why I'm really bad when people mention like TV personalities and that sort of thing, I'm always really rubbish at knowing who they are because I only watch very specific things I wanna watch and don't really know about like everything else going on. However, I, a few years back, started watching YouTube on the TV, which has probably been like a really bad thing for me because I love watching YouTube on the TV. You don't have to hold your phone in your hand. You can see it on a big screen, but it's become like that sort of mindless television to me. And I don't want to sound critical when I say this because the vast majority of what I watch is booktube and I love it. However, I am subscribed to absolutely hundreds of booktube accounts. Um, out of all my like bookish friends I know, I've never met anyone who subscribed to anywhere near as many accounts as I am. It is ridiculous, okay? And what I'll do is I'll have um, weekends where I'm just obsessively watching booktube for hours and hours and hours and hours. And then I'll run out of stuff to watch in my subscription feed. So then I'll just find channels, I'll find new channels. And I'll even like subscribe to people who I don't have very similar taste to. I'm probably never gonna pick up a book on their recommendation because we don't enjoy the same things, but I just want to watch someone talk about books, right? So I subscribe. And I think what it's become for me in large part, I, I think probably 70% of the, of the YouTube I watch has become that sort of like mindless, it's on in the background, I'm scrolling on my phone, I'm not actually paying attention, and I could be doing something else that I would really enjoy, like reading. And that had become a bit worse at the end of uh, 2022, because if you don't know, in the last couple of years, Johnny and I have got um, more into board gaming as a hobby. Um, we have a lot of board games. Board games are a hobby that take up a lot of time. And I started watching lots more um, board game content on YouTube, which I really love as well. But again, um, they tend to be quite long videos and I felt that I was yeah, spending even more time on YouTube basically. And I do not want to stop watching YouTube that I enjoy. I love hearing people talk about books. I love hearing people talk about board games. What I want to stop is watching a video that I'm not that interested in just for the sake of it, because I can basically switch my brain off. So that's going to be quite hard and I haven't done so well so far this year, but my excuse for that has been, this is like the best time of year for hobby content on board, on board tube, on book tube, because everybody's doing like wrap ups and uh, plans for the new year, which I absolutely love. Um, so I've watched a lot of that, um, but now it seems to be getting a bit more steady and I think I will be able to sort of pull myself away and focus much more on my reading. So that is how I'm gonna do it. I've gained some time off from work and I'm gonna try and get out this really bad habit of finishing work and then pretty much watching YouTube like nearly the whole evening. So there's that. So, like I said, I want to read more um, and within that reading more, I want to focus more on those genres I mentioned. So I wanna read much more nonfiction. In large part, I'd like to focus on memoirs and personal essays because I really tend to love those. But I definitely still wanna try and learn more about the world. So there's a few nonfiction books and sort of topics I wanna to focus on in 2023. Um, I also want to read more short story collections. I'd like to read at least one a month, but I'd be really happy if by the end of the year I've read 24. So like basically read a short story collection, two short story collections a month. That'd be really great. And I have way more than that on my list. Um, so I have lots of short story collections to choose between. So it's not like a lack of choice I have. I also have over a hundred memoirs and personal essays on my like written down TBR. So I don't own all these books, but I have a big old list. So I have a lot of choice. Um, I also wanna focus on more fantasy and something um, a few people on my Patreon mentioned to me, which has been super helpful is I have a really bad hit rate with fantasy in that I DNF a lot of it. And I think that's just because I'm a bit of an outlier in the sort of fantasy reading community in that I don't tend to be going for a lot of the similar things they're going for. So I hear loads of people rave about certain books and I read them and I think they're like rubbish. Um, and I really don't understand why everyone's raving about them. And I think it's just because I'm looking for something in fantasy that the vast majority of people who are paying for fantasy books um, aren't looking for. And that is, I, I really focus on slow pace. Um, I really like descriptive, detailed writing. Um, I want lots of character development and I tend to find fantasy is very fast paced, really focus on plot. Um, and a lot of the time, I think 
the, the author takes shortcuts in the character's development in order to move the plot, which I'm not a fan of. But a few of my um, patrons mentioned that I could use the Kindle reading sample. So rather than keep buying books and borrowing books from the library that I DNF, I could um, basically download a, a sample of the book onto my um, Kindle, um, have a glance at the sample. And to be honest, most of the time within like two pages, I know whether I'm gonna like it or not. So I've done that. And I actually spent a couple of hours over Christmas reading loads of samples and just crossed loads of books off my list and, and also found a few that I really enjoyed. Um, so that I'm hoping is going to help not only with my fantasy reading, but help in general with my DNFing. I've mentioned before in a previous video that I, I tend to buy, mo buy, borrow most of the books I read from the library. And then my plan is to only buy books if they're by a favourite author or if they're books not published in the UK that my library aren't willing to buy. Which tend to be quite a few of the books I'm interested in. But I've realised I can just like most of those books, unless they're from a really small press, do you still have the Kindle sample option. So rather than buy this book, get it imported and like have no idea if I'm going to like the writing style and sometimes DNF it after like a few pages, I can just do the Kindle sample. So I'm going to use that much more throughout 2023. I really hope that's going to um, take me away from reading lots of books that just aren't my thing. I'm hoping that will help with my average rating. Um, and you know continuing not to buy too many books so we shall see so yeah that is is my plan basically to try and read more of the genres that I know make me happy to use the kindle sample to avoid books that I'm just not going to enjoy and to just spend more time on reading basically as I've touched on my book buying I thought I would just briefly mention what my plan is so I last year was trying to get down to a zero TDR um, I got down to I think 13 books um, I mentioned those books in a video recently, which I'll link above. I got such great feedback on what people thought I should do with those final 13 books. And I am still working through that. And I may still do like an update video discussing what happened with those books. So do let me know if that's something you're interested in. But I've decided that I want to keep my TBR quite small. Um, and that's just because like with the amount of books I currently have, I still feel like I've got loads of choice. So I just don't think it needs to be that much bigger for me. So I would like my TBR to be no more than 30 books at a time. And that includes library books. I'd like that to be like no more than 15 books I own and then the rest can be library. At the moment it's sitting more like 20 books I own and 10 from the library just because I got some books for Christmas. But yeah, on average, I would like that to be significantly, um, you know, lower in terms of books I own and most of the books cycling from my house to be books I've borrowed from the library so yeah at the moment I have around that amount and I feel like I've got like loads of choice still and um, bearing in mind that I live in a city that has quite a few bookshops and has a really big library I'm a 20 minute walk from all those bookshops and that library so I don't feel like I'm ever going to run out of books and also every single book I keep is a book I would like to reread so I have hundreds of books behind me that I would like to reread um, and so I have loads of choice. I reread three books in 2022. I gave all of them five stars. I really want to reread re as much as I can this year um, because I just know, you know, I've loved these books and some of these books I've loved, I read like 10 years ago and I would just love to revisit them. So that's another way I'm gonna um, hopefully have a, a better reading year by reading books that I already know I love. And then the only other things I wanted to mention are the fact that I have a couple of other goals um, regarding my hobbies that I'm hoping to be able to, um, to do more. Now I have uh, plans for giving myself more time. One of those is that, like I said, Johnny and I have really got into the board game hobby, um, like to the point when we got like 14 new board games for Christmas, like we're properly obsessed. That's literally like all we bought for one another for Christmas. It's board games, um, but, we've realised that it's started to get to the point where we have a lot of board games we've only played once or twice and we have a lot of board games we've never played because like we'll get a big chunk and then like it'll be Christmas and we'll get another big chunk and we really want to make sure we play these games it's really easy as with reading to spend more time on acquiring books board games um, and watching people talk about them and making lists than it is to actually spend time on the hobby itself and so this year, we, we really want to make sure we um, play all our board games. I've started using a, an app um, that tracks 
my board game playing, which has been really useful. And um, that's going to be a really useful way for me to, for me to see how many times we've played each board game we owned. It also tracks who won or lost, which is going to be quite funny at the end of the year to see who is the better board game player. And yeah, we're also trying to make more time in the evenings for board games. I finish work at five, I work from home. There is definitely time to play, perhaps not like a super long game, but you know, a game that's like an hour, an hour and a half, we could easily fit in um, and not always be like, oh, that has to wait until the weekend. Um, so that's something we've been doing really well on so far. Um, we've played a lot of board games already this year and I have really enjoyed that. And the other thing is, and we always say this and we're always rubbish at it, we'd like to watch more films. Um, Johnny and I have over 600 films on a watch later list and that list just continues to grow because we are rubbish at watching them. And also um, we have loads of films that we profess to love that we've watched once, maybe twice, um, many, many years ago. So at the start of the year I said to Johnny, I'd like to try and re-watch one film a week and watch one new film a week. So far all we've done is watch one new film. <laughs> um, we also have a list of about 65 TV shows we'd like to watch. So. I don't know if I'm going to put a specific target on the TV and film thing, but what I'm basically saying is that rather than spend the majority of my time outside of my working hours watching YouTube that I'm not really paying attention to, I want to take that time and put it into my hobbies, which are reading, playing board games and watching film and TV. And like when I say film and TV, watching like not just easy to watch stuff um, that I've just you know, put on to like turn my brain off, watching stuff that, you know, I actually really want to watch and I've heard really good things about. So those are all my plans for 2023. Um, just one little extra thing I will say is that I'm hoping to start a board game channel very soon. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about it because I think it's going to be quite a lot more difficult um, to film and to edit than this channel is. But um yeah, it's something I would really like to do. Um, so it's something I'm hoping to do in the next month or so. But I will, of course, let you know when I've actually done that. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed. Um, it's not as hard as I'm expecting it to be. But yeah, so those are all my um, my plans and my thoughts on um, 2022. And I'm just, I've gone into 2023 with a really positive outlook. Um, I really do think I can make more time for all my hobbies. I genuinely think I could have an amazing reading year I want to be coming to you like every few weeks being like oh my god this book is amazing and you have to read it like I you know when I edit videos when I'm talking about a book I love it's so apparent um in the way I talk and the way I smile throughout the video and I want to um feel like that more throughout 2023 with my reading so yeah that is the plan so yeah Thanks for watching. This is probably a really long and rambly video. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts down below. I love hearing people's reading plans. So do let me know if you have any goals for the year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.